I always thought it would be cool to have a superpower. Imagine how awesome it would be to have a power that none of your friends had. Very cool. Shoot fire from your hands, fly through the air, jump over buildings, you know, the usual stuff. If I had to be a superhero, I'd probably be Spider-Man. Think about it, he's a part-time superhero, part-time photojournalist. He climbs up the side of buildings, he shoots webs from his hands, he catches bad guys. It's awesome. Hey, Ben. Jay, come on, man. Check it out, man. I'm climbing a building here. Oh, buddy, it's me, Jay. Yeah, check it out. Abs and everything, Batman costume. Man. Why are you even Batman? Batman doesn't even have a superpower. That's just it, man. No superpowers. Just a normal guy like me and you doing super things. Yeah, except for the muscles. Whatever. And the billions of dollars he has. Sure. And he has access to technology that's like 12 years more sooner <laughs> than... I don't even know what these things do, man. Yeah. It... We love superheroes. We love the idea of someone coming in to rescue us from impossible situations. Dude, think about it. Like, uh, throw up the bat signal, Batman's coming to save the day. Cry for help, there's gonna be a superhero on its way. It's awesome. Oh, probably Iron Man, just because he gets so much so much attention all the time of how awesome he is. Probably Spider-Man. I don't know, the webs are pretty cool, he can kinda do whatever he wants. Probably someone who could fly or be invisible. I'm gonna have to be Batman, because he's the one superhero who's just been resourceful enough to make it happen. It's probably Superman. Yeah, because he can fly and yeah, he's got a lot of superpowers, so. He'd be Superman. It'd be pretty cool to fly around. Um, I'd be Spider-Man. I'd go with yeah. Wonder Woman because she's a chick and she's hot and <laughs> she's, she's powerful. Hot. For me, it's breathing underwater. I totally love to breathe underwater. Go treasure hunting. Batman was always my man. And yeah, I just, something about Batman. I think it's the swagger. In this session, we're going to be talking about prayer. Now there are studies that say that 75% of people have admitted to praying once a week. This is a really surprising number. People pray for all kinds of things, exams, health, their family, that a certain girl would like them or that they'd win a hockey game. Whether people believe in God or not, it seems that when all else fails, people pray. Simply put, prayer is talking to God. In this session, we're gonna ask three questions. Why should we pray? How do we pray? And then do we always get what we ask for? A little boy was playing outside his house in his sandbox. He was digging deep holes and making tall sandcastles and generally having a wonderful time. Suddenly, his shovel hit upon something hard. Realising it was a rock, and of course not wanting a rock in his sandbox, the little boy began to dig it out. He dug around the rock, he pulled at the rock, he pushed the rock, but the rock simply wouldn't budge. Above him, at the window, the boy's father was watching all his efforts. As he watched, the boy managed to lift one side of the rock and slip his fingers underneath. The rock began to move, but suddenly it fell back and squashed the boy's thumb. The boy gave out a cry, and his father came running. The father held his son in his arms, and then asked him, Son, I don't understand. Why didn't you use all your strength to lift the rock? The boy replied through his tears, But I did, I did. No, you didn't, said his father. You didn't ask me for my help. The little boy stopped crying, silently nodded, and said, Yes, Daddy. Will, will you help me, please? The two of them bent down and lifted the rock together. This is what Jesus said about prayer. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you're sinful, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? 
So when I think about why pray, I think about our Heavenly Father stepping into the sandbox of our lives and moving the rocks out that we can never move on our own. The truth is, prayer changes things. And you can pray about anything, the little things or the big things. God cares about everything from what's happening in your family to what's going on in countries around the world. Yeah, I remember one time things were really falling apart with me and one of my friends. He believed a silly rumor at school and felt like it betrayed his trust. In reality, it wasn't true, but he believed it anyways. I tried for weeks to repair our friendship, but nothing I could say or do could fix it. And you know, this kind of seems small now, but when you're in the middle of that stuff with friends, it feels so heavy and hopeless. I remember asking Ben what I could do to fix it. He told me that I should talk to God and ask for help. I was a bit reluctant at first, so that I finally sat down and prayed. Not just that one time, but I continued to pray about it. It wasn't long before my friend had a complete change of heart. He called me. He told me he'd forgiven me and wanted to be friends again. I couldn't believe what he was saying. Now I know that you might think this is a coincidence, but I find that coincidences happen a lot when I pray. This isn't a one-time occurrence either. This is a pattern in my life. God answers prayers. When my sister Tara was in university, money was a bit tight for her and her husband. So one day, she went to do laundry and she looked down and she noticed a rip in her pants. She felt a bit embarrassed, but she figured she could live with it. So she threw up a quick prayer and then she didn't think about it again. The next week when she was at church, this guy she knew ran up to her and he said, Tara, I was hoping I'd see you today. I have something for you. And then he said, this is going to sound really strange, but I was praying the other day and felt God say to me that I should give you this money and tell you that it's okay to buy those pants. I don't know what that means to you, but here you go. Tara just stared at him. She couldn't believe it. She knew it was an answer to prayer that could only have been orchestrated by God. This is such a fun reminder that God cares about every area of our lives the big and the little. Now sometimes when we pray, we can treat God more like a vending machine than a person. Our prayers can sound like this. I will have a good week and a new car. Hey, man, I got a test this week. Can you just, yes. Yeah. And a uh, good mark on Ben's test. Thanks. But prayer is so much more than that. It's not about saying certain words to try to convince God to do certain things. The story about the boy in the sandbox is less about a rock that needs to be moved and more about a father who wants to be close to his son. He was simply waiting for him to ask. When Jesus gave his life on the cross, he was making it possible for us to have relationship with God. And prayer is all about us growing closer to God. Because they're not doing it right. You have to cut open a, a virgin goat and drench yourself in the blood first, and then you pray. Has anybody ever seen God? How could you necessarily get what it is if you don't know if that thing exists? You can pray for God to get something, but He might help you, like a smooth, you know, in order to get it smoothly. But you'll not help you get just get just like that. It would, be, it would just be too easy, I think. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think that they're praying for the right things. It might not be in God's will. Uh, it might be a grander vision, and yeah, yeah, getting what you want isn't necessarily what you really want. You just don't know yet. Jesus says that you know we could ask and it should be given, uh, but a lot of times I think we come into prayer with an agenda of what we want out of it. Because maybe the thing you pray for aren't the best for you. It was a dark and stormy night and Jesus and his disciples were in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. All the disciples were getting pretty scared because they ended up in the middle of a furious storm and they were afraid their boat was going to sink. What was Jesus doing? He was having a nap. Talk about a deep sleeper. The disciples woke him up and exclaimed, don't you care that we're going to die? Jesus got up and told the storm, quiet, be still, and instantly the wind and the waves disappeared. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and asked, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? There's no doubt that the wind and the waves were scary. But the disciples had forgotten that Jesus, who has the power over all creation, was in the boat with them. 
In Philippians 4, 6, it says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Jesus said that our Heavenly Father wants to give good things to those who ask. God never ignores. He never pushes us away, and He never gives us second best. But like a good parent, God gives us the right thing at the right time. I've prayed that I'd get a specific job or a certain girlfriend, and I'm so thankful that God did not give me what I asked for. Because sometimes the things that we want so bad in a specific moment are not best for us in the long run. Isaiah 55, 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. When I pray, I remember that God is a good Father who sees the big picture. Sometimes when I look back, I can see why God did the things that He did. But other times, it's not that easy. In any situation, no matter how chaotic it is, we can still have peace and joy. I remember the day when I found out my parents were splitting up. In a moment, my entire world was flipped upside down. I started crying as I sat in my living room, trying to understand what was happening. I didn't know what to say or what to do. I was devastated. I made a decision in that moment. I decided to believe that God was still good. God was still strong and still loving. And I decided to worship Him. I had just learned how to play guitar, so I picked it up and I started to play and sing. As I sang, I cried and I struggled to get the words out. I sang about how God's love was my anchor. Nothing about the situation changed. My parents were still splitting up. My life was still flipped upside down. And yet in my heart, everything was different. I had peace. It's the kind of peace that's hard to explain. I hope that by this time on Alpha, you've realized that Jason and I don't have all the answers. Even now, when I think about my parents splitting up, I don't understand why God didn't bring my family back together. But I do know this. God cares about me and He cares about my family. And I can have peace no matter what's happening. I actually have, I mean, praying to something, not really a God necessarily, but a higher power. Um, a friend of mine was dying, it didn't work. If you had asked me when I still believed in prayer what happened, I would have said that the God that I was praying to um, gave me the strength to find the insights within myself. But now if you ask me, I'd say that I was figuring out the answers on my own um, and then blaming something else for the insights that I found. I, I prayed once and <laughs> the one that comes to mind is when I was a little kid, I prayed for a uh, toy tractor. I never got the tractor. I know it gets answered, so I pray for whatever I want. I have tried praying many times. My brother has like a heart defect, so my family's like pretty religious, so we would pray as a group kind of thing. I pray for a lot of stuff, yeah. I pray for a lot of stuff. I mean, it's, it's all about your faith, you know. Jesus modeled a life of prayer. He prayed all the time. In the Gospels, you see him praying with others and praying alone. He was often found sneaking away from the crowds to spend time talking to his heavenly Father. On one occasion, Jesus' closest followers asked him if he would teach them to pray. We don't want to end this session without telling you what Jesus taught them. In Matthew 6, verse 5, Jesus says this, When you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. When we pray, we need to find a regular time and place. I remember while growing up, every morning I'd find my dad sitting in the same green armchair, praying and studying his Bible. That was the best place for him to get away from any distractions and be alone with God. My friend Landry, on the other hand, he doesn't sit in a green armchair. He likes to go for walks when he prays. He encouraged me that everyone needs to find the best way for them to connect with God. Yeah, for each one of us, the time and place we meet with God will be unique. So where could your place be? When's the time each day when you can sneak away to talk with God? Jesus goes on to say, And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. 
And when you pray, don't keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they'll be heard because they're many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Jesus makes it clear that prayer is not meant to be a show of some sort of religious superiority. Prayer should be simple, from the heart, just you talking to God. Just like a conversation between two friends. There's no magic words to making a prayer a home run. And there's no magic formula needed. God responds to simple prayers of faith from His children. In Jesus' most famous teaching, called the Sermon on the Mount, He gives us a guide to help us pray. And we want to unpack it piece by piece. Here's what He says. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I love that Jesus teaches us to start our prayers by talking to our dad. God is our kind and generous heavenly Father. His name is the greatest name in the entire universe. It's an invitation to start our prayers with worship and thanksgiving. And then he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray, we ask for his will and plans to happen in our lives. We invite the reality of God's kingdom to invade the circumstances of our world. And he goes on to say, give us today our daily bread. This is an invitation from Jesus to ask him for anything we need day to day. God cares about even our smallest of needs and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Debts is another word for the wrong things we have done. When we hold on to secret sin, or hold bitterness or unforgiveness in our hearts, it robs from the effectiveness of our prayers. When we ask Jesus to forgive us, the answer is always yes. Forgiving others and seeking forgiveness from God is the most freeing thing we can do in our daily prayers. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Temptation's all around us, but God wants to give us the strength we need to resist evil. Jesus wants to illuminate a path for us that leads us into full life. It doesn't really make sense to think that God would care to listen to you or me, but He does. God loves us, and Jesus' life is proof. A few sessions ago, we looked at why Jesus died, and we talked about how Jesus destroyed the wall that sin has built between us and God. We can pray because Jesus broke down that wall. We can have a friendship with God because Jesus makes it possible. I love the idea that God who stands over heaven and earth bends down and turns his ear towards his children as they pray. My friend Jeff told me that when he first began to pray, he felt like he was leaving voicemails to God. But over time, he began to realize that it's a conversation, not a one-way message. Now the best way to begin to pray is to pray. I wonder if you'd be willing right now to take a few minutes to talk to God, to thank him for the blessings in your life to ask for his help and for what you need, and to seek his will for your life. Prayer is the most important part of a relationship with Jesus. So give it a shot. God's listening.